Here's a map from the book that includes many of the major surface currents in the world ocean. And we'll take a look at each one of these uh, in general. So going from the very general gyre circulation, this just depicting the subtropical gyres, adding in all of them here. Here is a subpolar gyre in the Atlantic Ocean. Here's a subpolar gyre in the Pacific Ocean. So weakly defined. Uh, or not not very well. Um, we, we didn't provide a lot of details for this. And here's the Antarctic circumpolar current. Okay, so those are some of the other, in addition to the five major subtropical gyres, here's the two subpolar gyres. The Arctic Ocean has its own circulation system. We're not going to get into any details about that. Of course, the Antarctic has the Antarctic circumpolar current as a major uh, surface circulation factor. And we'll also talk about some currents running through here, not shown in this particular picture here, but the Indonesian through flow, which is a really important area of study in surface circulation in modern oceanographic times in the 21st century. All right, again, now you should be able to name the eastern boundary currents and the western boundary currents. And again, we'll talk a little bit more detail about those. Let me re-emphasize too, these are just general patterns for the circulation of the ocean. Equatorial currents running across the equator, north or south of the equator, may not exactly always run like that. We actually even have an equatorial countercurrent that runs many times underneath the surface of the ocean. And sometimes these currents will have different names as well, but you should be familiar really with this map. You should be familiar with these currents. And knowing the names of the currents, knowing the names of the continents, isn't just a mere memorization exercise, although that's not a bad thing, for improving your memory, but it also helps you understand different cultures, different peoples, and when you go somewhere, it also helps you understand the kinds of weather or climate that they might experience, because ocean currents influence our weather patterns and our climate patterns throughout the world as well. All right, let's focus in on the North Pacific, the North Pacific Current runs across the North Pacific Ocean, as we've said here. It actually is a little bit further north than is actually shown in this figure, and this Alaska gyre, subpolar gyre, is displaced a little bit further to the north, again, than shown here, because the North Pacific Current actually kind of runs into Vancouver Island here. Washington and Oregon right here, Vancouver Island here, and there's where it splits north and becomes the Alaska Current or Alaska Gyre and splits south and becomes the California Current. So even in this figure here, for purposes of trying to fit all these names in a book so you can see the actual figure, um, realize that these are very generalized, ideal kind of arrows for, um, for depicting the current. As explained in the book, the North Pacific Current because it's of its interaction with the jet stream is a major influence over our weather in the United States of America. It provides a lot of the moisture and in many times whether uh, depending on the position of the jet stream and depending on current flows in the North Pacific and sea surface temperatures, it can alter climate patterns and weather patterns in the United States. Of course, the California current should be easy to remember for students living in California. For those of you that live in Washington and Oregon, you just have to remember that, I don't know, California dominates the West. Why wasn't it called the Washington current? Because it starts in Washington. I don't know, somebody called it the California current. And you just have to live with that. It's just a California-centric view of the world. But the California current runs along the eastern boundary of the Pacific Ocean. So it's an eastern boundary current that feeds into the North Equatorial Current, which then itself feeds into the Kuroshio Current. Some of the North Equatorial Current probably actually feeds the Equatorial Counter Current. Some of this water probably moves through here as well. We'll get to that detail in just a few minutes. The Kuroshio Current is a western boundary current. Kuroshio actually means black current. And you'd have to ask the Japanese why it's called the black current. In any case, this completes the North Pacific subtropic, subtropical gyre, North Pacific Ocean, California, North Equatorial, Kuroshio. And here is a kind of not quite that sort of 
circular gyre shape that we normally think of, but in the um, subpolar Pacific gyre, we have the Oya Shio current that runs down along uh, north from uh, Russia here to Japan and actually interacts with the Kura Shio current, a region of intense physical activity in terms of the ocean and the Bering Sea current that runs through the Bering Sea. So again, these are broad generalizations, um, but just being aware of some of the currents in those regions. If we look at the Atlantic Ocean, similar kind of thing, but a little bit more complexity. And again, you can see that the nature of the continents and that will also influence some of the uh, oceanography. The Gulf Stream is the prominent western boundary current along the east coast of the United States. The North Atlantic Current, like the North Pacific Current, travels from west to east across the North Atlantic. It, some of it, this North Atlantic Current actually runs into Ireland and the United Kingdom, Scotland here and forms part of the Norway Current. It also splits and goes down into the Canary Island Current, named because there's lots of canaries in those islands and the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa um, being an important area for upwelling as we'll see soon. But this is another eastern boundary current, the North Equatorial Current, same name, different current uh, across the equator of the North Atlantic and the Gulf Stream. What we don't show here, but should show here and, and will in future editions, is the loop current that runs through the Gulf of Mexico. And this current, which runs through the Gulf of Mexico, has turned out to be a really important current in terms of hurricane activity in the Gulf. It can actually um, help, it can actually help reduce the intensity of hurricanes, or in some cases actually make hurricanes worse. And so as we've learned more about the circulation of the Gulf of Mexico, we're beginning to understand the influence of this current called the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico and its interaction with hurricanes and other processes too, as well as fishery. So still lots to learn even here close to home. I want to point out one error. This error, this error, this arrow should be up here because this Labrador current actually runs upwards towards the north along the west coast of Greenland and then back south or on around Labrador and Newfoundland. Okay, so this current actually makes this kind of loop. And this is an important current because as this current travels up north here, this ice cap, the Greenland ice cap, and the rivers or the glaciers that have formed in different river valleys uh, in Greenland, this is where this ice cap drops off ice into the water and that ice becomes icebergs. And so the icebergs will flow up north, spend a couple years or so here in this region in Baffin Bay before they trickle out into the North Atlantic. And of course, you know one famous story of an iceberg that traveled out of by the Labrador current and got in the way of a famous ship that would be the Titanic. And the collision of the Titanic with an iceberg that came out of this region of the world, of course, uh, is still talked about today, and it made Leo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet famous as a result of that three-hour-long epic movie directed by James Cameron called Titanic, Jack Rose, Jack Rose. It should have been called Jack and Rose. In any case, that's the story of icebergs. Interestingly, after the collision of the Titanic with that iceberg, the International Ice Patrol was formed to monitor icebergs and to give warning of icebergs in the path of ships. In the last couple years, the International Ice Patrol has had nothing to do because there haven't been any icebergs that far south in the North Atlantic. And what is the reason why? Well, we suspect global warming. If we look again up into the Arctic regions uh, or further north, the Norway current runs, this would be a subpolar gyre, the Norway current runs along the coast of Norway and forms a kind of loop here with the East Greenland current. Or actually, this might be the West Greenland current, uh, uh, so named in other books, or uh, we just didn't include it here. Uh, another circulation pattern, but again, just a way to make you familiar with different patterns and different continents as well, and some of the names of the currents in the North Atlantic 